This video begins the exam review for Math 3, Algebra 1, uh, from the Test 2 material. Okay, we'll begin by solving the inequality, graph the solution set, and then write the answer in interval notation. So, to solve the inequality, this is where you need to keep the variable on the left-hand side. So, we're going to get rid of the 4 by subtracting it. Bring down the negative one-fifth, bring down the less than, 6 minus 4 is 2. And now we need to get rid of the negative one-fifth. Well, we can do that by multiplying both sides by negative 5. Remember, when you multiply or divide by a negative with inequalities, you flip the direction of the sign. So bring down the x, flip the direction of the inequality to greater than, and 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. You have solved the inequality when the variable is by itself on the left-hand side of the inequality symbol. Okay, now we want to graph it. So remember that we use open parentheses to indicate um, the sign with no equal sign, to not include it, and with an equal sign we use a bracket. Okay, so greater than negative 10, let's just put a few numbers here, I'm not going to fill them all in, but say negative 10 is here, we'll put negative 15, and negative 5 up this way. Okay? So greater than means we're going to not include the negative 10, so I'm going to use a parenthesis, and then I'm going to shade the direction where the numbers are larger than negative 10, and indicate by the darkened arrow that that keeps going and going and going. Okay, so that's our solution set graphed. Now we want to translate this graph into interval notation. And you use the same symbols here, so we're going to use a parenthesis. The smallest number in the shaded region would be negative 10. And because we have the parenthesis, it means it doesn't include negative 10, but it goes all the way up to negative 10. And then what's the largest number in the shaded region? Well, since it keeps going and going and going and going, this is going to be positive infinity and this direction would be negative infinity. So this keeps going to positive infinity. And infinity is a concept, not a number. It can never equal infinity, so we would never put a bracket around infinity. We would always use a parenthesis. So here's our solution. Here is the graph of the solution set, and here is the interval notation. And you need all three in order to answer that question. Okay, let's solve this inequality, graph the solution set, and write the answer in interval notation, just like we did before. The difference here is you'll notice that there are two inequality symbols. This makes this a compound inequality. And recall that this is an AND, or between graph, which we talked about in class. We want to get x isolated between the two inequality symbols, okay? So we're going to get rid of the 1 by subtracting the 1 on all sides, not just the middle, not just the ends, but all of them. Okay, 13 minus 1 is 12. Bring down the less than, bring down the 4x. The 1's here cancel. Bring down the less than or equal to, and 21 minus 1 is 20. Okay, now we want to get rid of the 4, so to do that we'll divide everything by 4. Once again, we have to divide all sides, not just the middle, not just the ends. Since I'm dividing by a positive, I do not flip the direction of the inequality, and this would be 3 less than x less than or equal to 5. There's your solution. Because this is a between graph, the x is isolated between the two numbers. It's also read um, x greater than 3 and x less than or equal to 5. That's another way to look at that. So let's put these numbers on the number line. And I'm not going to fill them all in, obviously, but there's a few numbers around the number. And no equal sign under the inequality. Recall we said that that means it's, you're going to use a parenthesis. Okay. An equal sign under the inequality means we'll use a bracket. And in between is where we will shade, because the answer is all the numbers in between 3 and 5, not including 3, but including 5. Okay, so now let's translate the graph into the interval. We see a parenthesis first around the number 3. That's the smallest number in the interval. The largest number would be 5, and you see that the bracket, okay, 
and all of these things mean the same thing. It's just another way to represent the solution. Okay, number 18. Determine whether the ordered pair is a solution of the given linear equation. Here's the linear equation and here's the ordered pair. Remember that the first number in an ordered pair is x and the second number is y. So if it is a solution, if I substitute in the value for x and y, it will be a true statement. So let's see if that works. 2, replace the x with negative 2 since the x value of the point is negative 2, plus 5 times replace the y value with negative 1 since the y value of the point is negative 1, equals negative 8 and do the math on the left side following the order of operation. So we will multiply first. There's nothing to do on the right side here. We're just going to keep bringing down that negative 8. And you can see that negative 9 does not equal negative 8, so that means that no, that point is not a solution. Okay. If it was negative 8 equals negative 8, then it would be true, and then yes, that point would be a solution. But in this case, it's not true, so therefore it is not a solution. Okay, we're going to look at this picture, the graph, and identify the intercepts. Notice it just says intercepts, which means we want to look at both the x and the y intercepts. And then we want to find the slope. And we can find the slope either using the slope formula or we can count. Now it's really hard to see with this uh, particular graph, so it, you got to be real careful where the actual points are. Um, it looks like it either crosses at the y-axis, that's the y, this is the x, it looks like it crosses the y at either 5 or 6. Okay, and I think we're going to go with the 6 there, so we're going to say the y-intercept is the point 0, 6, okay, right here. Okay, now we need to see where it crosses the x-axis and it looks like this point right here, which looks to be negative 1. So the x-intercept appears to be negative 1, 0. Now when you have two points, it's easy for us to just calculate using the slope formula, but we could count. Remember that slope is rise over run. So from this point to this point, I would rise, I would go up 6, so that's a positive 6, and I would go right 1, so it looks like the slope is 6 by us counting. Well, let's confirm that using the slope formula, because it doesn't matter which one you use, you should get the same answers. The slope formula is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, and it doesn't matter which point you pick for x and y1 and so forth. I'm going to call that x1, y1, and I'm going to call this x2, y2, and I'm just going to plug it in and solve. So 0 minus 6, y2 minus y1, over negative 1 minus 0, x2 minus x1, and do the math. That's negative 6 over negative 1, which you see still gives us a positive 6. So it doesn't matter which way you find the slope, whether you use the formula or whether you count on the graph, you should get the same answers.